Okay, my name is Kelsey. And I'm Dookie for Selena. Welcome to the Tropical Forest. Today on Facebook Live, we're about to meet our spotted hyenas. Kelsey? Yeah, so today we're behind the scenes and we're going to talk a little bit about our two male spotted hyenas, Pika and Kai. So hyenas are part of a matriarchal social system. And what that means is that dominant females establish social hierarchy within the system and the least dominant female still outranks the most dominant male. And clans like this can be up to 40 individuals. So that's like your grandmother or your mother ruling over a house with 40 of your closest friends and family. It's a pretty good zoo. Hierarchy is pretty crazy because a lot of the animals at the zoo have this sort of social structure. Animals, just like humans, can be very political and they have their lowest people, their highest people, they're kind of in between. It all depends on the personality of the animal. So these guys right here in this pair, we've got the two males. Fika right here is actually the least dominant, even though he's the oldest. So it doesn't matter age, it doesn't matter any of that stuff. It's all about how they perceive each other within the group. And hyenas are most commonly known as being scavengers, but they're actually primarily hunters. And when hyenas get together and hunt in these clans, their, seven, their success rate is at 70%, which is very high. That's pretty good. Yeah, and these guys, here at the zoo, we feed them things like very different ground meats. We also give them um, small vertebrates like chicks and the occasional watermelon, cantaloupe, or even peanut butter. So these guys can eat quite a few different things. Yeah, they are big eaters and they love to chew. In the wild, these animals would take down a prey and eat pretty much the whole thing. Bones, skin, everything that you can think of that's on the animal. So the good thing about this diet that we give them here at the zoo is that it includes all of those things. And then like Kelsey said, when we give them the chicks or even bones, big like beef knuckles that they can munch on, they go through it like crazy. They love it. Yeah, and hyenas actually have one of the strongest jaws of any land animal. So they're pretty impressive. So let's talk a little bit about our two guys here. So like I said, we have Fika and Kai. Now, to tell them apart back here is very easy because obviously we work here in the tropical forest and we're right up next to them. From the front of the exhibit, you're gonna have a little harder time telling them apart, but we're still gonna give you some tips just to help you out. So I'm gonna throw my meatball, see if we can get their faces a little bit closer. Whoops, it landed by his foot and he doesn't even notice. All right, so who do we have here? This is Fika. Fika, you can tell, is a little more rugged looking. When he puts his face up to the fence, you can see that he has a lot more scarring on his face. He even has a little bit of bald patches on his back. Kai is the younger one who just got the meatball right there. Kai, if we wanted to use the technical term, is cuter. He has like a sweeter little face. He's much younger. So Fika is 22, Kai's only 10. But like I said, even in this arrangement, even though Kai is younger, he's still more dominant than Fika. And that's actually why Fika has those little bald patches on his back. Part of hyena dominance displays is to kind of nip at each other and bite each other on the back. So that's how Fika ends up with that little bald patch. But don't worry, every morning he gets a luscious aloe spray treatment to help keep the skin back there nice and smooth and supple. And a lot of people wonder how these social systems are established so Kai and Fika are both from Denver, Colorado, and Kai's mother is more is higher up on the hierarchy than Fika's. So even though Fika is older, his mother was higher up, so automatically Kai will outrank Fika. That's pretty crazy. And what's even crazier to think is that these guys came from Colorado and then went to another institution before coming to Franklin Park. So that hierarchy, that social structure got carried with them all the way, even though they obviously no longer live with their mothers, and it's just the two of them here. That is impressive and it shows you how smart these animals are. Speaking about how smart they are, one of the questions we get most often is about their laugh. Their laugh is very commonly portrayed in film. And what a lot of people don't know is that their laugh is just one of over 20 vocalizations that these guys have among their clan members. And the reason for that is because they're so socially complex that they need ways to communicate with each other and their laugh is actually more of a distress call to alert other members of the clan. Yeah, when we hear the laugh here at Franklin Park Zoo, it usually means that they can't wait to eat something or they're a little nervous. These guys are very, very sensitive. As big and strong as they are, they're very sensitive to loud noises or lots of people. So we hope when you come back, you make sure that you respect their space and keep it nice and quiet. It will encourage them to come closer to you in the habitat. 
So one thing um, Selena, Keeper Selena is doing right now is she's providing them um, different types of enrichment. So this is what we would consider a food enrichment for these guys. Um, because they're so socially complex, we have to keep them very interested in their environment and their activities. So during the summertime, some go-to enrichments for us can be scents, bags, paper, and boxes. Whether it's spraying some logs in the enclosure, um, or providing scent trails, or hanging up bags with meat in them and encouraging them to tear them down and rip them apart like they might do a prey item, we want to keep them engaged. It, it uh, increases their welfare when we provide them adequate enrichment. And during the winter when it's cold, yeah. these guys get fun enrichment in their, in their warmed up barn. Um, they actually sometimes like to watch movies, which is kind of a fun thing to give them. As Especially as soon as I turn on the TV, Kai will start to <laughs> get really excited and settle down in his bed right next to the TV, which seems very strange. Um, but if you think of them as predators, these guys are built for watching. They would spend all day watching for prey items to walk by. So watching TV is not that big of a stretch. If you guys have any questions that you want to ask us, please feel free to type them right into the comments. We have people here who are going to read them to us, and we would love to hear what you have to say. Yes, Maggie would like to know what their favorite food is. So, I think if we had to choose something that they extra, extra love, bones would probably be their favorite. Unfortunately, you might have seen a couple, I think it was a week ago already, Thika just had a dental procedure. So, Thika, our older guy, this is Kai, Thika. I don't know if you can see Thika, but he decided he's done for the day. He's laying in the shade yawning as we speak. So Thika actually just got a root canal just a week ago. We noticed uh, over the course of a couple months that his mouth and his face was starting to get a little swollen. And through training, we were actually able to figure out that he had an abscessed tooth. So one of his teeth had become infected. Luckily, we have a partnership with a local human dentist who also works with animals. And he was able to come help us out and give Thika a root canal which has kind of limited their ability to get bones. You can imagine if you had had a root canal, you're not gonna be chomping down on a fried chicken wing right away. So um, other than that, they just, they're very, very what we would call food motivated. They love everything, fish, chicks, their diet, anything that we give them, these guys are big fans of. But prior to the whole dental situation, I would say that bones were probably their favorite because it was so exciting and novel. Novel is the word we use to describe when something is really new for them. So the bones were very novel and awesome. One more meatball, guys. They, they, don't, they just took a break. They're done with us, I guess. Mm -hmm. Do they have a favorite enrichment item? Hmm. I would say the bones also kind of count as enrichment, but something that I like to do for them is to give them the blood that kind of pools. You know how if you would buy a package of meat at the store, a lot of like red bloody liquid kind of pools at the bottom? The same thing happens with the meat that we give them. And so what I like to do is you can see their exhibit has a lot of logs and rocks. So I'll create blood trails for them. And then once I put them out on exhibit, you'll see them kind of chasing the blood trails around the exhibit. It's pretty cool. And Katie is interested in what their lifespan is. Oh, good question, Katie. So in captivity, their lifespans um, are a, a maximum of 25 years old. Um, so Thika being 22 years old is kind of at the upper range of that. Um, and in the wild, their life expectancy is closer to 15 to 20 years. And we always say at the zoo, obviously they have great health care. They have keepers here every day watching them. In the wild, an animal like Thika, that tooth might have gotten infected. And because he's so old, that really might have been the end for him. He wouldn't have been able to hunt. He wouldn't have been able to keep up if he started feeling ill. So obviously in zoos, their life expectancy goes up a lot. They've got great people taking care of them such as myself and Kelsey. <laughs> Any other questions from Facebook Live? No other questions, but something that the viewers might be interested in is if either of you have a favorite animal that you work with here at the zoo. Well, right now because of COVID-19, it's actually been very interesting here, especially in the tropical forest. So my coworker Kelsey here, on a normal day, we would have, on a normal week, we would have seen each other four days a week. We're always together. But since March, I haven't even seen Kelsey, which is crazy and seems not related to this question, but it is. <laughs> what has happened is we've had to split up our staff members and everybody is sort of working with one set of animals. Usually in the tropical forest building, we would work with different animals every day. Kelsey might work with the birds one day, the lemurs the next. I might be working with the gorillas one morning and the hippos the next. 
But since the beginning of this outbreak, we've been asked to stay with our animals. It's helping us eliminate the risk of transmission. Um, so long-winded answer to answer that right now, my favorite are actually the hyenas, which sounds like I'm just a commercial for the hyena. But within the routine that I'm working with right now, I love these guys. They're so brilliant. Training with them in the morning is one of my favorite things to do. They're so smart. They can present them. So I said earlier we do an aloe spray for Thika's back. That's totally voluntary. You just ask him to stand up against the fence and he presents his back and I can spray him right from here. And for me, the amazing thing about working in a zoo is this magic connection that we get to have with these amazing animals. And we know that you guys are missing that while you've been home. So short answer, the hyenas. Long answer, we love our zoos. Yeah, and to add on to what Selena said too, here in the tropical forest, we have a lot of animals that are COVID sensitive. Mm -hmm. Even the hyenas, even though they are low risk, they are still sensitive to COVID. So you can see we're wearing our face masks. Selena also has gloves on to give any food items. Anytime we're preparing diets, we're also wearing safety gear. Um, so it's important that even though we might not be working with our favorite animal right now, that we keep that social distancing. Mm -hmm. I'm partial to the hippos. Um, I love the hyenas, but I also love the hippos part of it. Everybody has their preferences. Can we take one last question before yeah, we one wrap last up? Question. Let's hear it. Uh, Elmer, who's four years old, wants to know why hyenas laugh. I know we talked about it before, but if you could just quickly share again why the hyenas laugh. Yeah. Okay. okay, so Elmer, you've probably seen in a lot of movies, they show all the hyenas laughing. But that's actually not a sound that means that they're happy like a human would be. For them, it's more of a distress call. It means something is scaring them or maybe they're a little upset about something that's happening with their family. So that is why they would laugh. If something was a little bit off, that's a call that they can make. And just like if you were to say help and somebody would hear you, the hyena laugh is like their kind of help to say to their family members, something's weird, something's wrong. I need some assistance. So we are so grateful that you've been joining us on these zoo to use every day at 1.30. These are the hyenas of the tropical forest and they are looking forward to seeing you when the zoos open back up to the public on June the 4th. Now we want you guys to make sure that you stay safe even when you come back to visit us. So please keep tuned to our website. We're gonna be releasing some new information about how your zoo visit is gonna change a little bit when you come back to us now that we are starting to reopen and see our friends again. Until then, the hyenas will be out here in this beautiful weather. I will be here, not with Kelsey at the same time, but we'll both be here and we cannot wait to see you. I'm Zookeeper Selena. I'm Kelsey. And this is Zoo to You.